Good morning and welcome to St. Matthew's on this Wednesday, the ninth day of December. Today we celebrate the life of Karl Barth during our service. Morning Prayer Rite 1 begins on page 42 of the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We continue with the Invitatory Psalm. This morning we will read together Christ our Passover, which begins on page 46 of the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he dieth unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. We continue with the psalm appointed for today. It is Psalm 76, verses 7 through 12. And the psalm begins on page 692 of the prayer book. What terror you inspire! Who can stand before you when you are angry? From heaven you pronounce judgment. The earth was afraid and was still. When God rose up to judgment, and to save all the oppressed of earth. Truly wrathful Edom will give you thanks, and the remnant of Hamath will keep your feasts. Make a vow to the Lord your God to keep it. Let all around him bring gifts to him who is worthy to be feared. He breaks the spirit of princes and strikes terror in the kings of the earth. Continue with a reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, beginning at the 34th verse. Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The word of the Lord. We continue with uh, Canticle 4, the Song of Zechariah, which begins on page 50 of the prayer book. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should, that we should be saved from our enemies, and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Born in Switzerland in the year 1886, Bart studied at several prestigious universities, including Turbingen. After completing his studies, he served as a pastor in Geneva and Sevenwil. 
The events of the First World War led Barth to, Barth to critically question the dominant theology of the day, which in Barth's view held a too easy peace between theology and culture. In his commentary on Romans, published in the year 1918, Bart reasserted doctrines such as God's sovereignty and human sin, central ideas which he believed were excluded and overshadowed in theological discourse at the time. With Hitler's rise to power, Bart joined the confessional church and was chiefly responsible for the writing of the Barman Declaration in 1934, one of its foundational documents. In it, Barth claimed that the church's allegiance to God in Christ gave it the moral imperative to challenge the rule and violence of Hitler. Barth was himself ultimately forced to resign his professorship at Bonn due to his refusal to swear an oath to Hitler. In the year 1932, Barth published the first volume of his 13-volume opus, The Church Dogmatics. Bart would work on the dogmatics until his death in the year 1968. An exhaustive account of his theological themes and a daring reassessment of the entire Christian theological tradition, the dogmatics gave new thought to some of the central themes first articulated in the commentary on Romans. In the, in the first volume, The Doctrine of the Word of God, Bart laid out many of the theological notions which would com comprise the heart of the entire work, including his understanding of God's Word as the definitive source of revelation, the incarnation as the bridge between God's revelation and human sin, and the election and the creation as God's great end. Karl Barth was one of the great thinkers of the 20th century. Pope Pius XII regarded him as the most important theologian, theologian since Thomas Aquinas. This assessment speaks to the respect Barth received from both Protestant and Catholic theologians and to his influence within both theological communities. Our service continues as we together affirm our faith, reciting together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit let us pray. We begin with the Lord's Prayer, followed by Suffrages A. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. We continue with the colics. Almighty God, source of justice beyond human knowledge, we offer thanks that, that thou didst inspire Karl Barth to resist tyranny and exalt thy saving grace, without which we cannot apprehend thy will. Teach us like him to live by faith, and even in chaotic and perilous times to perceive the light of thy eternal glory, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, throughout all ages. Amen. 
God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely, trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of thy faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all members of thy holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and godly serve thee, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Take a moment to offer our prayers and thanksgivings. We give thanks for this season of Advent. We give thanks for the chance to make connections with family. We pray especially for those who are neglected, lonely, needy, for the poor and those who, who need support and prayer. We give thanks for all the blessings that you've given us. We pray that you may turn our hearts and those of others to reach out in love to our community and to the world. I invite your prayers and thanksgivings. Gracious God, for all our prayers spoken and those that reside deep in our hearts, we lift them up to you this day. We conclude our prayers by saying together a prayer of St. Christostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining morning prayer today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless.